Uh, well, the new physical activity guidelines uh, launched earlier in the summer, so uh, start active, stay active, uh, build on the previous guidelines that came out in England in 2004. Um, but they enable more flexibility in how people can meet the weekly recommendations for um, being active for general health benefits. So rather than just talking about moderate intensity physical activity, the guidelines reflect that um, you should be active um, at least for 150 minutes of at least moderate intensity activity, but you can also incorporate vigorous intensity activity to help meet the guidelines. Um, the, the classic example of this is moderate intensity activity refers to someone who is uh, feeling slightly warm, out of breath, um, with your heart beating faster. Um, vigorous intensity activity is your heart's beating even faster, um, and you're probably finding it difficult to carry on a conversation while exercising. So um, whilst the headline message for adults is that they should try and achieve um, 150 minutes of uh, physical activity across the week, uh, with daily activity kind of built into that. Um, you can actually do that um, by a vigorous intensity activity. So 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity is equal to 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity. So vigorous is essentially worth double that of moderate intensity activity. So it makes it a bit easier to fit, I think, your 150 minutes into, into your week. So you can do a combination of both moderate and vigorous intensity activity. For the first time ever, the new guidelines also reflect um, the entire life course. So there are guidelines that tell you how active you should be if you're under five, so guidelines for early years, guidelines for children and young people, so five to 18 year olds, guidelines for adults and older adults as well. So bespoke guidelines for each of the age groups telling them how active they should be. Um, so what I should also mention is that the guidelines for the first time incorporate uh, sedentary behaviour uh, advice as well. So uh, what we've learned is that sedentary behaviour, so sitting still or lying down for long periods of time, is an independent risk factor for health. So even if you're meeting your 150 minutes or your five times 30 a week, if you're still sedentary for long periods of time, you're still at risk of uh, a variety of different chronic conditions. Um, what we're unable to do is to quantify uh, or limit the amount, quantify the amount of time you should not spend being sedentary. But we do know that you should break up periods of sedentary behaviour. And that goes for each age group as well. So it's particularly important for early years with the issue of restraint, so not um, keeping young children restrained for long periods of time, enabling them to be active and to reach out and grasp stimuli for the really young ones. Um, and. Uh, not keeping them in um, kind of high chairs or car seats for longer than is, for longer than is necessary. But it's just an important message. Sedentary behaviour uh, is also a risk factor for ill health, and we should break up our periods spent being sedentary.